Hello there. Welcome to a short course of HTML anchor tag. So I have created this course of uh, 10, 11 videos, uh, very short videos so that in an entire course kind of gets over within 30 minutes of time. And we are going to go through some, you know, bits and pieces of anchor tag and want to learn like the usage of anchor tag. But hold on, why anchor tag? Don't you already know a lot about it? Isn't it very well famous tag? I think the answer is, is it depends. Of course, a good portion of anchor tag usage is, is very well known. But I feel that some portion of it is not very well known. You know, you know, people are probably not using it because they don't know it or probably they feel that, you know, this is something that uh, we should not be using kind of stuff. So I thought, you know, bringing all the things together, let's create this uh, particular uh, course. Now, um, again, thank you very much for, uh, you know, your support on, for this, on this channel. And thank you very much for liking and commenting my previous videos. So I would expect that, you know, you will also let me know, like, how do you like this particular course so that I can start making more courses like this, you know, uh, in future. So what are we going to cover today? What are the aspects? The aspects that we are going to cover today are this. These are the 10 aspects that we will be covering today. Uh, one is, of course, linking to the external page and then uh, coming the fact that linking uh, to the section of the page, then link to an external app like an email app or the phone app or linking to a script, then uh, download a file. We are actually talking about the literal download, not like opening a file in a new tab or things like that. Download a file, then open the page in a new tab. That's something that probably we do very much. Then opening in a new tab and what are the kind of security concerns that you have to deal with? You have to learn about that. Then we'll talk about how to link to a parent frame. If you have multiple frames inside the window, how do you link? You know, that is the thing. And then the last interesting thing that we're talking about, how to track the click on your web pages, like how to ping the track on the on the link click right that's what we will learn and but i have one more thing i have something bonus for you so apart from all these 10 things we will, what we are going to cover at the end we are going to cover how to style an anchor right so what are the different states of anchor and how do you how do you get go about styling it so we'll learn that also i feel you must be excited by now like to learn this so let's not waste much time and let's go towards learning thing as much as possible right so how about getting into the action straight away? All right. So let us see the first usage among the 10 usages. The first usage is linked to a web page. We'll go to our VS Code straight away and first we'll create an anchor. To create an anchor, we have to use the A tag. So use the A tag and then with A tag, we have to give say a text that will appear as a link text. Say my website is the text that I'll go ahead with. So I save this. And I come over here and I see something like my website has appeared, but it doesn't do anything as such. If I click on it also, it's because it is missing an important property or attribute called href. So what with href, you can link to any of the website page. So what I'll be doing is like, let me first link to say HTTPS tapasadhikari.com. So this is going to link to my website whenever I actually click on it. So I'll just organize it a little bit better so that, you know, um, it looks good. The formatting looks good. So a href to link it. So you go over there. And now if I click on this, this is going to go to my website. I'm going to bring my website straight away. All right. So I'm going to get to my, my website and I'm going to see that. So this is the first usage. So with the first usage, what we have seen, we are using the href attribute to link to a website page. Let's move on to the next usage. So in this next usage, what we are going to see how to link to a section of the page. Now to teach that, I have created several sections in this page. For example, there's news, blog, research, finance, and history. And at the top, there are links that we want to link to, you know, with the different section. Right now, this link doesn't do anything. So let's look into the code. What we have, we have a bunch of links, bunch of anchors that we know, like we have created with a tag. And then the below, what we have, I ha we have different sections. So this is the section for news. Then we have blog. Then we have research and show, so on. So right now, we have to link this um, anchor hyperlinks with each of the section. To do that, what we'll be doing, we'll be taking advantage of same HREA property. But this time, what we'll be doing, we'll be linking with the section's ID. 
So if for the news section, the ID is news. So we will say news prefix by one hash. So this is how this particular section will be linked to this particular hyperlink. So that whenever we click on this hyperlink, the control goes to the section directly. So like this, we are going to uh, give href for all other links and, and link to the ID of the individual section below. Right. So I have added this. Now let's see it in action. So if we go to the page, now we see these are looking like links. Let's click on blog. So you see it scrolled to blog. The URL also changed to hash blog. With back button, I can come back and I can now go to history. It scrolled to history. So this isn't a beautiful. We are able to link to the section of our choice using anchor link. So that's our usage number two, link to a section of the page. Let's move to usage number three. So here comes our third usage. In the third usage, we will learn how to open the email client just by clicking on a link. To do that, again, let's create an anchor and let's give it a name called send email so that this text appears when the you know anchor comes on the page. And in the href, so so far we have seen things like using HTTP, HTTPS protocol or connecting to the same page, but we'll see something like a mail to. So the mail to protocol will give you know some email id like this and that's pretty much it now if we click on the link we should be able to uh, you know open up the email client so let's do that let's open up the email client all right so that's where we see the outlook has opened that's the default email client for me and we can see the two list uh, two field actually populated with the email id me.example.com so that's awesome thank you let's move to the next one so with usage 4, we are going to see how to link to a phone caller. We have just seen email. Now let's see how to do the phone caller. So for that, we'll again create an anchor tag. So let's create an anchor tag. And let's say, call me. And again, we'll take advantage of the href attribute, very useful. And instead of mail to, we'll be using the tell colon, right? Tell colon protocol and then give um, Imaginarily, probably what email uh, phone number. Then, so let's see. And now, if we save and then go back to our web page and click on Call Me, let's see what happened. I see, you know, our my default application like Make a Call From is open up on Windows 10. If you have already configured your phone with this, it will automatically open your phone, or you can pick up an app like a Skype or something to make this call. Isn't that awesome? So that's all about usage four. And in usage four, you link with your default phone caller app. Let's move to usage five. The usage five. In usage five, let's learn how to link to a script from the hyperlink itself. So to do that, let's create the hyperlink as usual. Give like say greeting. And we will again use the href tag. And in the href tag, we will do JavaScript. So we have learned mail to, we have learned tell, now JavaScript. And here you can probably call any of the JavaScript function. So I'm calling a window function, JavaScript window function for alert to alert something and say, hey, awesome. Closing this, closing this, that's all. So JavaScript colon a JavaScript function you can directly call with href. So let's see how this works. Once I click, I see the alert. Hey, awesome. Thank you for being awesome. And don't forget to subscribe to this video, subscribe to this channel uh, to get the future videos. Thank you very much. Let's move to usage six. So let's do usage number six. In this usage, what we are going to see is downloading a file. Just by clicking on link, we'll be able to download a file, open the download model, select the drive, uh, and then you'll be able to save that file into a local disk. Okay, let's do that. Now to demonstrate this one, you know, I have an image uh, of our Indian superstar Rajnikanth. So this is the image and what I'm going to use is like, I'm going to use, I just took this image from internet just for the demonstration purpose. So whoever made this image, thank you uh, very much. So I, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to download this file, right? So for that, first thing is like, what we're going to do is first, let's show this image in the page. So we'll do IMG tag is the image tag and IMG comes with SRC. 
uh, with src we will have say this particular file image and then we'll give an alt attribute and image tag without an alt attribute is a crime you will lose out of the accessibility case so please give the alt attribute always and then let's give some width to this photo because it's a little bit bigger in size and then we will give some kind of height so that it kind of appears correctly so i think this should be good enough for this image to start appearing into the page and let's see how does the image look like so this is the image that is coming up now what we're going to do instead of creating a separate link we will create we will make this image itself a link and once you click on this we'll be able to download this file to your local disk so for that one small thing we have to do we have taken create an anchor tag but this time giving a text to the anchor tag the anchor tag is having the image itself so it means the entire image itself is an anchor tag placeholder now so you should be able to click on that image and you'll be able to interact with this image now to download very simple we'll use the href again we'll give this file name this is the file name and just add one attribute called download that's all this is a new attribute uh, added in the html5 so you just make it and now what will happen is if i go back over here and see that this is a link now if i click on this i should be able to see a dialog box coming up and the download is started here you go so i should be able to save. now while saving you may not like this name as is you want to kind of change this so for that what you can do is basically you can give this new name like download equals to probably you want to give like um, Kaliva. So um, you can give like this and now if you download this file once again it will be downloaded to this name that I have given over here. So let's try to do that as well. Good enough. So you are able to see the new name over here. Just one thing, remember, uh, this works really well, only works for the uh, same origin file. That means wherever your uh, web app is hosted, this particular page is hosted, the file should be located into the same server. It cannot do cross origin, the cross server file download. So that about the usage number six, the download attribute to download a file from the same origin. Okay, let's move to usage number seven. The usage seven, is about opening the page in the new window or new tab so we'll go ahead and start creating one anchor again so with the a tag we'll create an anchor and we'll say open you know any text so that it gets the text for the anchor and then of course the href to link to a, a site or the page so let's do to my site again and instead of opening this page into the same page where this link is what we'll be doing will be opening this page into a new tab or a new window now to facilitate that we will be adding one more attribute called target and the target attribute value should be underscore black so this if this happens it means it's like once you click on the link this basically open this page up link to this page up in a new tab if you do a control and then click and then open it into the new window altogether, right? So let's see that if we just click on this, a new tab opens altogether, and this is going to open up my website, right? So this is about opening in the new window or new tab target equals to underscore blank. In the usage eight, we will extend this target equals to underscore blank to talk about a serious security risk called tab nabbing and how to fix that okay so let's move to usage number eight all right so in usage eight let's talk about opening a new tab and tab nabbing so what tab nabbing is it's basically a kind of security attack cyber attack uh, we also call it as type of phishing attack so through which what an attacker does an attacker get hold of your source tab and try to inject something in that so that you are kind of redirect your application to another lookalike application with a minute change like um, login form and things like that to kind of tweak, tweak you to provide your credential and then steal it and this all happens you know when you click on a link you your new tab opens but in the meantime what it does is basically it catch hold of your older tab this, uh, you know and do some modification over here that you may not notice because 
the one that is re re redirect to is look like your actual application but with a very minimalistic changes like a login form or things like that with which they can collect your information right want to see a demonstration of that okay let's 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 show you that so this is a pretty old um, browser like i8 i hope you're not using it today and this is a awesome website you know where they have demonstrated this phenomena very well so see this page there is nothing actually on the top of about ariel no opener we will we'll, we'll discuss what exactly it is and there is a link now i am clicking on this link and this link is going to open a page in a new tab but there is something going to happen when i click on this this will be opening a page right away okay the page has opened and there is a text call why don't you go back to the previous tab and the moment i go back to the previous tab you see here this was not there it's saying you have been hacked so here it is just for the demonstration purpose so you are seeing this text over here but actual attacker can inject anything in your page and the page look like an older page or only but little bit of changes you might get really tricked by the attacker right so this is a serious concern and to actually you know come out of this concern we have a new at attribute to now learn is called rel so rel attribute with the value no opener make sure that you are not falling into this kind of trap at all so whenever you are using target equals to underscore blank to open the new tab make sure that you're also using rel equals to no opener now one good news one good news is that the modern browsers are already taking care of that that whenever there is a new tab opening the new you know no one is going to get handle of the window dot opener object of your older tab so it, once you get on, you know, hand, hand on the window dot opener object, you can actually uh, call a location and or redirect to give the new URL you to go to any other, you know, website. So recent, recent browsers are already kind of doing this. So the same site, if I open over here, okay, it's here and I click over there, it's open up the new tab. But if I go back to the older tab, I won't see, you know, those kind of, you know, red alert at the top because it is kind of taken care right so definitely definitely you have to use this one with target equals to underscore blank you also have to add rel equals to no opener you know just like this one like this and uh, if you are actually using an you know, old older browser like the one that i showed like you know i8 or things like that you can also add the no referrer uh, value as well so it's like this the one that over here here just below the no opener yeah is a no referral as well as another workaround so that you know it is also safe so please be mindful wherever you're using target equals to underscore blank please use real, real attribute values no opener and no referral to safeguard yourself for from the situation like tab naming all right so let's move on to our usage number nine all right so with usage nine we are going to see how to link to the parent frame from a child frame using the link tag. But what is frame, first of all? So in HTML, we have a tag called iframe. Using that, we can link to any of the sources. For example, we can actually get another HTML document completely embedded into one HTML document and so on. So I have created two HTML documents, but they are you know very simple HTML, doesn't do anything than doing a you know having a p one is child children.html to so say that i am a children and there is a grand.html say that i am a grandchildren so our objective is like we'll be getting the source of children.html into index.html and the source of grandchildren dot grand.html to the children.html so that is a hierarchy that is you know established so first let's do that so where we'll be doing like iframe and iframe has a, a attribute called src with that you point to the page that you want to include so children.html i'm including and that's pretty much it so if i save this and go to our site and we should be able to see yeah i am a children is coming from the children.html now next thing i'm going to do going inside the children i'm going to actually get the source of grandchildren to children so let's go to children.html i'll copy this for the saving time so you go to children.html here i'll be putting one more iframe and i'll be including the content of grand.html so 
Now what we will see basically after going there first will be IMA children and within IMA children actually this is IMA grandchildren that is actually getting embedded. So both are there together. Now what we are going to do from IMA grandchildren I want to link to its parent page which is like children and want to open a page there. Okay. So we will do that. So for that what we will be doing is like I will go to IMA grandchildren the grandchildren one and let's do an anchor tag so a href equals to say https let's take example.com and then we will do target equals to first we'll do something called underscore self self means open it you know on you right so we'll say example so open it on your self is the default value for any anchor tag you know if you don't give anything it is basically underscore self so if i click on this the example.com will come up over here see here the example.com is coming into the grandchildren so it's linked and it's coming on top of that particular page now if i want it to open it to its parent which is the children what i'll be able to do is like i will do like this parent so now the grand's parent is the children so if i click on this link and once i come here and the link appears now we will see that the, it will open in the children basically in the entire this rectangle so i will do example.com click on this okay there is some problem i guess let me try to fix that yeah of course because i have misspelled it so this is target now if i go and let it refresh let the link come i click on this example now as you see it is now opening completely into the parent frame now what if i want to open in the top like a grandparent frame or like i completely at the top so for that you should use the targets call underscore top right so with this now if i uh, click on this guy it's going to open up completely at the top basically it's going to take out everything and then example.com should open over here yeah you see that so that's what how you interact with frame with three target values one is self which is default value then parent the parent frame and then the top which is like at the top window object so i hope you enjoyed usage 9 let's go to usage 10 that's our last usage so on the last usage that we're going to discuss is we are going to talk about a special attribute called ping and why exactly we're going to use that okay so let's say that you have a website and there is a link and you want to know like you know how many users of your website have clicked on that particular link so that you know like what is the uh, kind of user count who are actually interested in this link and that helps you in your business you know uh, growth or business indication so to do that native html anchor tag provides an attribute called ping so what you can do in the ping attribute value you can actually provide an URL and on this URL whenever you whenever you click on the regular you know link on this particular URL a post call is made by default is automatically made by the browser and if you have an implementation of that post call what you can do is basically you can gather that information like okay a new call has come so increment the count by one or do something at the back end basically based on that call right so it's all happen automatically you just need to implement at your server side a uh, post call implementation of this ping call right so let's see that with an example uh, so what we'll do we'll first create an anchor as usual so we'll have a href and let's go to say https uh, example.com and we'll open it in a new tab so target equals to underscore blank and then we will have something called ping and in this ping one you can actually tell that which url this post call should be, should be made so example dot com say slash ping this has you and if you have to make it for to the multiple urls you can actually specify multiple urls you know separated by a space but i'm just doing it for one for now and then you know you have this slash a complete and you say here uh, my site something like this right so it's a regular uh, link but you also have a ping attribute saying that whenever somebody click on this link please make a post call on this particular url now if you have a service running on this url 
and uh, it's actually doing something, you can actually do a lot of operations based on that. And this name ping can be anything. It can be tracking. Usually, you know, people say like this is like tracking, you know, click tracking. So, all right. So, we'll go and see like how it works. Uh, for this purpose, I'll open up uh, the dev tools because what we're going to do, we are going to uh, see the network calls and see like how the calls have been made. All right. So but I'll first click on this my site and it is supposed to open example.com as usual. So example.com is going to open, but I'll go back to the source site. And do you see this tracking call here? Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. It is saying 404 because I don't have a server set implementation for this yet. If, we, if I had that, I would have got 200. So great, this is a tracking call. Now I click on this. And as I click on this, I'm going to see certain values which are useful. So first thing first that I'm going to see is like it's a post call. So request method is post and the payload. The only thing that is saying is a four letter word called ping, P-I-N-G, that's all. So the server side, as and when you get a P-I-N-G as a, you know, payload, you can increment the value in your database by one or do something so that, you know, you know that there is a, there is a new tracking request has come. And then one more thing that I want to kind of show you over here is like, um yes this path is you see here is like slash tracking that we have given and then that's pretty much it uh, i guess you can also notice this ping from and the ping to attributes you know those are also will be useful so that's all about the ping um you know we, we always have this google analytics and all other analytics tool but something that you want to do homegrown and want to try out something very lightweight so ping is a handy option for it okay so that's conclude the usage number 10. I hope you enjoyed watching all the usages of HTML anchor link. Thank you very much. Welcome to the bonus section of the course, um, you know, learning about HTML anchor tag usages. So in this video, we are going to cover about how to style anchor tags, right? So to do that, let us first create anchor tag. Now we know that to create an anchor tag, we have to use the A tag and then we have to give one attribute called href to link a page. Let's do, let's link one example.com and then give a target attribute so that we open this page in a new tab. And then give, a, you know, also give uh, the text like, you know, say my anchor like that. Okay. So now if we see in the page, we should uh, see this anchor tag has come up. All right, we see this anchor tag. Now, if I mouse over on this anchor tag, uh, there is not much style changes and all. So what we'll be doing is like, we'll be taking care of those stylings part right away. So let's do that. So anchor tag has four states. One state is called link. The next one is called hover. Then we have a state called active. And the last one is called visited. What exactly is these states are? The link is the default state. Basically, it's a, just an anchor that rendered on a page. That's how the link state is. Hover is a state when you mouse over on an anchor tag. Like that's a, that's when the hover state gets activated. The active state, when it is getting activated, is like the moment you click on an anchor. Only that very moment, it is called active. The anchor is active. And once you are done with the clicking, then the actor gets into the visited state. So the difference between active and visited is like the moment you click that particular moment it is active after you are done with your clicking it is in a visited state. So these are the four states. Now based on these four states uh, CSS provide us an opportunity to create um, CSS studio classes. So what exactly studio classes are? Studio classes are basically the selector basically the tag name then colon then the state. This become your pseudo CSS pseudo class selector pseudo selector with that if you do like this you can write all your styles over here you know using these brackets you can write all your css styles over here so that when a particular situation with the anchor type happen these styles will be applied so if i have a colon visited and some styles like color this background color this and border this and things like that when you click on an anchor tag then once the click is done these styles will be applied on this anchor tag so let us say this, of course, we won't write it here. We will be writing all this thing into the CSS file. Uh, so I have created those pseudo selectors over here. So a colon link, a colon hover, a colon active and a colon visited. Of course, all are blank. We are going to fill them. 
So a colon link is the default one, which is similar to this a. There is not much differences. That's the uh, you know that's that's all about it. So what we are going to do, we are probably going to use the same color. Like by default, let's use this as a color without any problem. Now, if you hover on a anchor tag, let's change the color. Let's change the color to um, green. Yeah, that works. Then when you do active, that particular time, let's select a color like blue yeah we just click on it and then once the clicking is done uh, let's say pink now uh, if, if it is like you know very fast you won't see much differences between an active and visited you probably won't notice the active one but if there is a delay uh, you will be definitely noticing a difference between active and visited one so we'll save this one and we'll directly now go to our uh, page and see how these things are working out so this is what it is so i have this my anchor now if i mouse over on this do you see what happened this is green because i have given the hover state as a green color the moment i click on it if you notice it will open a page like examples.com in the new tab so you might not just notice you know very clearly but start to notice it will turn to blue and then it will go to the pink blue now if i come over here uh, you know um, so this one is visited See, you saw that blue, right? It's coming over here and now it's visited. You see, this is in a pink color. So, visited is in a pink color. So, once the click happens, this particular page gets loaded. Your examples.com get loaded. And then, uh, you know, you have this link visited and it turns the color to pink. So, that's pretty much it about, you know, styling. Now, best part is what you know. You can always come here and add any styles over here, right? You know, of your choice. For example, you have added this hover, right? Um, you can add uh, possibly, uh, you know, background color over here, or you have added up, you know, some kind of, um, you know, font, say, font size. You can add, say, 30 pixel over here. So whenever you actually mouse, uh, you know, mouse over on this one. Uh, what will happen is like you know you uh, definitely get this one uh, you know activated quite easily so uh, that's all so we'll see this font size one once quickly okay it's not common so you we'll see the font size one once quickly like on hover how it happens Ooh, see this this tiny effect yeah so that's all about uh, styling um, the anchor tags uh, you know i hope you enjoyed watching this video and if that is the case um, you know um, i would like to request you to please subscribe um, to the channel so that you get to know about much more future stuff you know much more things that i'm going to share and create videos you know and uh, share with you thank you very much please take a great care of yourself thanks a lot